in this quick tip I'd like to talk about winter flying. Here in the northern hemisphere we're starting to get colder weather, the days are a lot shorter and we're getting a lot more rain and that means the way that we have to fly and use our RC equipment changes a little bit. Now a lot of what we're going to talk about in the next five minutes is pretty much common sense. Some of it though is things that I've learned the hard way that even though I'll try to apply some common sense I got caught out and every time I've got caught out it's resulted typically in a crash and um, some expense and time and effort repairing the model. Luckily it's never resulted in any damage to anybody or anything apart from the model itself. So for those of you who may be new to the hobby this year, I know I've had a lot of subscribers who have joined who are building their first models and quadcopters. This is really for you guys and girls where it's just a quick summary of things to think about if you're going to have some time with a reasonable winter's day and you want to go to the local field and throw your new model up and have a good time. Going to talk about four things really here. Flying navigation, electronics and FPV because there are considerations around all these things when you are flying in uh, winter conditions. So let's go and talk about the first one and talk about flying and this is probably the bit that's the most common sense. Uh, the first thing of course is wrap up warm. What you don't realize in the summer is you can be stood still for 20-30 minutes at a time while you're watching your craft or even worse if you're FPVing you'll be stood absolutely still with your head maybe bobbing around as you look through the goggles and um, in summer that's not an issue but if you're stood in the middle of a cold field or even a field that's covered in frost or even snow, uh, standing still for 20 minutes will very quickly leach all of the heat away from your body. So make sure that you are wrapping up nice and warm, that you're wearing a scarf, cap, all the other bits and bobs. Um, if you can get fingerless gloves, that's great. You can buy the kind of things that you can put your transmitter into that helps keep them um, nice and warm. But I would say that, you know, fingerless gloves seem to work pretty well or wearing normal gloves and putting them on when you're not flying can help keep your hands warm. A good tip is when you've uh, flown the model and you've landed it and that LiPo battery comes off and it's slightly warm is it's great to uh, hold it in your hand for a couple of minutes because that actually transfers some of that heat back into your cold fingers. But you will find that flying around with stiffer fingers as they get cold will slow your reaction time. So some of the maneuvers that you'll find easy in summer you might find that because your fingers aren't reacting as quickly are a little bit more exciting in the winter so just take account of that just watch your height because height's your friend when you're trying stuff out also double and triple check the fell safe features particularly the return to home on any model you want to make sure that if you do get into trouble or you know you get a cramp or you lose the feeling in your fingers or whatever you can flick a switch on your transmitter and the return to home function will take care of bringing the model back safely to you and make sure things like the fail safe onto the receiver are all checked um, if these things go down and it's going down into some standing water that's on the field so there might be slight depression that's full of um, icy slush you don't want your model landing in it and sod's law unfortunately says if there's an entire field with one puddle in the middle of it with a bit of icy slush that's where the model's going to come down and finally keep an eye on the weather it is changeable and uh, what might start off as reasonable uh, you might find that halfway through the flight the wind starts getting up or it starts clouding over or whatever uh, be prepared at any point to kind of bring your model in pack it away and get out of there before the weather turns nasty so that's pretty common sense next one's kind of common sense add lights to your model if you haven't got some on there already I have another video that talks about how you can put LED lights simply onto a quad or a plane um, it's very good for orientation in the summer you'll only tend to use these at dusk when the lights getting worse or maybe for night flying but I find that having lights on all the time in the poorer conditions particularly if uh, it starts to get a bit misty uh, it just means that you maintain a good visual contact with the craft as it's flying around so just think about that um, you can add things like a Hobby King Turnigy switch so you can turn them on and off so you don't have to have them on all the time but for this time of year I actually have a couple of craft that are lit up like Christmas trees for exactly this reason 
Okay, last two things we'll talk about. Some of this is less obvious, but just be um, aware. Let's talk about electronics. Electronics, as you know, really hate moisture. Getting electronics wet tends to really upset them. Um, cover and protect what you can. So make sure it's in um, heat shrink, ideally, or behind uh, covers. As you can see on this quad, I've actually cut the top of a... It's actually a dessert that came from um, a restaurant, and this covered the top of the dessert, and it's the perfect size to go over the top of a 450 quad. So it's held on with a couple of elastic bands through the legs at the bottom, but it means that if the quad does fall out the sky or it lands and flips over, it's not going to land in wet grass and cover all of the sensitive multi-Wii and GPS electronics with lots of water. Don't forget though, when you're flying, if your model is cold, that fog and mist will condense on it as well. So even if it isn't raining, if it's a bit foggy or misty, as you're flying around, you might get to the point where the board becomes saturated. If there's any muck on the board, it might then start to conduct and you might get some unexpected behavior. So be careful about that. And finally, when you land, the grass that you're probably landing in hasn't been cut for many months. It's probably full of um, leaves and all kinds of bits and pieces and it will be wet through typically in winter when you land the underside of your model will get covered in moisture so i put a little um, towel in the back of the car and as you get the models back just wipe them off so that that moisture isn't working its way under heat shrink and other bits and pieces to uh, upset things like your speed controllers also, just to keep an eye out as well for things like mud splashing up into the bottom of your motors. Um, if you see any of that, immediately uh, clean it out and give it a good oiling. You don't want grit going into your bearings um, off that mud uh, because that will really shorten the life of the motor itself. LiPo battery performance. Um, LiPo batteries, like any batteries, rely on a chemical reaction to release the electrical energy and that chemical reaction relies on a certain amount of heat. LiPo batteries are sluggish in colder weather. So you'll find that if you get 10 minutes out of a LiPo battery in summer months, flying in um, freezing or near freezing conditions, you might lose as much as two, maybe even three minutes off your flight time. So test how much you're getting out the battery. And I would always reduce the timer on your um, transmitter by 20 to even 30 percent to make sure that you don't overtax the lipo batteries and cause them to uh, get upset if you have models that you're not going to be flying over the winter just double check that all of the batteries that you have are on what's called a storage charge most modern chargers these days allow you to set a storage charge on a lipo that's typically 3.8 volts a cell that will allow you to put those lipos down for the winter and take them out again in spring and start to use them and they'll be in the best possible condition. In my early career, I unfortunately had a couple of very nice um, batteries that I got from the States that we're using um, on helicopters actually. I didn't discharge them, put them away with the helicopter and when I brought it out again in the spring to carry on flying, both of the batteries had actually puffed up. So by putting them away fully charged, um, it had caused an irreversible irre chemical reaction, if I can say it, and that meant those uh, packs were scrap. Last thing to talk about then is FPV. So for those of you that have been playing with FPV for the first time over the summer and got addicted, um, it's very tricky to stop even when the weather's cold and when there is snow on the ground you can get some really stunning views of the local landscape and it looks completely different with, um, with that snow about. A um, couple of things here, condensation can be a real nuisance. One of the first FPV flights I ever had in cold weather ended in me having to put the craft down in a far field because the goggles started to fog up. Unfortunately, the goggles had been in the boot of the car out of the heating as I'd driven to the field. And when I took them out, they were cold, put them on my eyes. Initially, they were fine. And then the moisture and condensation off my eyes themselves started to settle out onto the lenses on the goggles. And after about three or four minutes, I couldn't see a thing. So be aware of that. If you're going to be wear, you, using or wearing goggles, um, keep them where they're going to be warm. If you let them get cold, they're going to condense. 
Similarly, the camera lenses, the little cameras on front of the things like the Mobius cam, your GoPro, your 808, 16, whatever you're using for FPV, if it's cold, again, you'll get condensation um, on that lens and that will affect the quality of the video you're recording, but also could potentially compromise the flight. And again, that's why we need those return to home features double, triple checked, so that if we do get into trouble, we can flick that switch and we're not going to lose the craft or bring it down where other people might be around. Last thing to remember is lower light levels and low sun. Uh, the sun is going to be a lot lower in the sky and it's going to cast a lot more uh, deeper, longer shadows when it is up. And because of that, you'll find that when you're flying FPV, whereas the sun is pretty much above you, so as you swing the craft around um, in the middle of the day, you'll, you'll find that you're still getting beautiful views. When you turn it towards that low sun in the sky, the cameras will expose for that bright sunshine and you'll lose all of the ground detail. So remember that and be aware of it. And I would also suggest that if you're going to try and fly, always um, have it so that when you're flying back to you for safety, that you're not stood with the sun behind you because that means whenever you're flying back to yourself or down the field, you're not going to be able to see the ground at all, which isn't ideal. Again, another reason why return to home is handy. So hopefully that's interesting and useful for those of you who are new to RC over the summer and you're coming into your first winter with a hobby. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please post them below. Uh, please like, subscribe, be safe and happy flying.